started sir okay uh, good evening everyone uh, uh, welcome to uh, one and all everyone for the international kangaroo mother care uh, webinar that we are uh, we are uh, going to be having in the next few hours uh, this is organized uh, by the kangaroo mother care foundation of india along with support from uh, nnf gujarat uh, so as you can see uh, kangaroo mother care foundation uh, be began somewhere in 2014 2015 uh, after we had our international kangaroo mother care workshop in 2012 in amdavad uh, we are celebrating this uh, we are doing this webinar by for the national newborn care week of india uh, which runs in this week and uh, in addition to the world prematurity day which runs on uh, 17 november uh, kmc foundation began with actually for the reason for uh, scaling up awareness uh, advocacy and the proper practice of kmc and the promotion of kmc related research in india uh, our mission is that the mother's chest is the best place for uh, newborn care and mother's milk is the best food for uh, newborn nutrition uh, we have our own website where we have our newsletters and uh, various other uh, uh, resources that are available and can can be shared by everyone uh, we are a group of people uh, who who work work uh, for this particular uh, foundation and it's a trust uh, uh, with with no uh, profit making uh, enterprise uh, we have been supporting the government of india and various states in uh, india for ensuring that uh, kmc advocacy uh, is being done okay uh, this thing is supported by dr mohit sani and dr snail desai of uh, national neurology forum of in of uh, gujarat and dr mohit uh, is the president and dr secretary and dr snail is the secretary so they are with us uh, today and helping us ensure that uh, we are able to, uh, to do the webinar in a successful way uh, with this i uh, hand over to uh, dr uh, shashivani who who will be taking over uh, for the next speaker thank you dr somshekhar and first of all i welcome all our speakers today and particularly our international speakers dr natali charpak and dr nils bergman they have been very kind enough to readily accept our invitation to join our webinar today and as all of you know we have been promoting kangaru care to the best possible level and we want to improve the quality of kangaru care in india so so far kangaru position and kangaru nutrition madam you are muted can you hear me now yes sir yes sir yes okay i welcome all our guest speakers and the participants today for our international webinar our main objective has been always to improve the quality and coverage of kmc in india to some extent we have achieved a few things but i thought the element of follow up and early child development these are all missing from our concept and definitions of kangaroo mother care in india and from that angle i have requested the speakers to put emphasis on that so with this brief introduction and thanking all the speakers dr nils bergman dr natli chapak dr ruchi nanauti dr rekha odani and our guest of honor dr sumita ghosh she has joined in spite of her very busy schedule in government of india projects but i am really thankful to all of you for readily accepting our invitations and making this day a very good day for us today is a very auspicious day in gujarat according to our traditional calendar we call it la pacham and all the good things begin on this day and we are also starting one good project today thank you very much and i now request dr nils bergman to start the project to in pro, to start the program here now nils bergman is a very well known international figure in kangaru care projects everywhere he has covered with all his keynote addresses on kmc at all the international all the six continents and in many international conferences in kmc 
He now researches and promotes KMC for full time. He made a beginning in South Africa with his studies. And then right now he is working as a research affiliate in Karolinska Institute, Stockholm, Sweden. He has graduated from University of Cape Town and has started working in South Africa and then Zimbabwe and now currently in Sweden. And together with his midwife, Agneta Juriso, they had developed and implemented KMC program for premature infants right from birth. And that had resulted in a five-fold improvement in survival of very low birth weight babies and subsequently introduced KMC in South Africa. And now, of course, he is on the international platform. Dr. Nils, please. Today, he has chosen a very interesting topic. That is, first thousand minutes. So far, we have been talking about thousand hours and thousand days. But now he wants to talk about first thousand minutes and first thousand hours. Dr. Niels, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I shall uh, see that I can uh, monster these buttons. Uh, and uh, I hope that everybody can see my screen. Uh, yes, we can see your screen. Uh, the screen should be showing your own logo. Thank you very much for inviting me to uh, this day and to be the first speaker even. So uh, the first thousand days begin with the first thousand minutes. So let me unpack that first away. Everybody knows about the thousand days, 270, 365 times two is a thousand. And that's early childhood development. The focus of this attention, however, has always been a year later. And yes, we acknowledge pregnancy, but the thousand days actually came from nutritionists. <laughs> and so they didn't really uh, have the focus. Uh, and it's more the second year that has a focus. Now, development, developmental programming to be particular, determines the outcomes at two years. And developmental programming starts much, much earlier. And so I'm depicting that in my arrow here. And now it started at conception, but there's a particular period around about birth. And that's a thousand minutes for those of you who are mathematically challenged. That's nearly 16 hours, 17 hours. But let's just call it the first day of life. The first two years are all very well, but the first day is the focus of my attention. Because at this point in time, there are critical periods operating in development and a lot of signaling hormones. These are particular hormones that make settings of hormone receptors, cortisol, vasopressin, uh, endorphins, oxytocin, dopamine. They are working at this particular point in time to achieve regulation of the body and connection to mother. And then we have the microbiota, of course, that we shouldn't forget. Now, here at the top of the slide, you see uh, some signs that I'm not going to have time to cover today. But the important thing is that it's the environment which determines what epigenes do, how the brain works, and how our behavior and development follows. And then anthropologists tell us nothing an infant can or cannot do makes sense except in the light of mother's body. And no more so than at birth. And at birth, as uh, Shashi mentioned, uh, I started doing kangaroo mother care in 1988. And it's skin to skin contact that makes the baby know the baby's epigenes, the baby's genetics, the baby's genome, uh, the baby's development know that it's in a safe place so that regulation and connection can start. Actually, though, I think the thousand minutes are the most important. This actually starts in the first thousand seconds. The first hour is when most of these critical things are taking place. If you don't get maternal microbiota in the first hour, you're going to get some other microbiota that's going to kick out the mother microbiota. And you get dysbiosis. And so transition to extra uterine life starts immediately. So a lot of the critical things actually take place in the first thousand seconds. But thousand minutes, first day, these are when things really get started. So notice that I called it immediate at birth, but now continuous. We don't stop after the first hour. That's a 
trap that we've fallen into, the first golden hour. And after that, we separate. No, after that, we continue with skin-to-skin -skin contact. And the immediate at birth continues. And notice how nicely the thousand hours is 41.6 days. That's exactly six weeks. And so that's the period for consolidating these processes that are so important. So at pregnancy, up to the point of birth, we're prepared for a launch into life. And the first thousand days begin from here. You've heard me speak before about zero separation. Now, this is the negative side of the same coin because here you see the harm that follows not just the baby, but also the mother when separation takes place in these thousand seconds and thousand minutes. And so uh, very briefly, why zero separation? I'm going to try and condense this as tightly as I can and start with the epigenetics, uh, which are determined by the environment. And I take this from a man called Punkstep uh, and a man called Myron Hofer, who shows in this slide here that uh, the interactions between the parent and the infant exemplified by kangaroo mother care, achieves regulation. And they're critical periods, they're the hormones, there's the regulation and the connection taking place. Now, when you separate, there is absence of the buffering protection of adult support. And that is the definition of toxic stress. Toxic stress is when it's prolonged and it produces cortisol. Cortisol is producing homeostasis. So we think stable vital signs is good, but if it's prolonged and accomplished by cortisol, it is good in the short term, but not in the long term. And this was the iconic experiment of Michael Meany. Michael Meany did the experiments with rats. I don't have time to explain this very much in detail, but on the right hand side, you see the H. PA hypocampus hypothalamic pituitary axis that produces cortisol and the receptors are these blue uh, V's on top of the hippocampal surface. And many had rats which are high licking grooming and they produced healthy babies that became healthy offspring. But he also had rats who were otherwise identical who were unhealthy and produced unhealthy offspring. And the only difference was the number of receptors activated on the surface of their brains. His experiment was to take a baby from the healthy mother and give it to an unhealthy mother. The unhealthy mother produced a stepchild that was unhealthy. And so purely the nature and nurture response effect together uh, of Low licking and grooming, as in poor buffering of adult support, produced a poorer phenotype. Early stress alters gene expression by epigenes with health impact across the lifespan. Iconic experiment. Please look into this if you haven't come across it. Now, I want to state, yes, it applies for rats, but we also now know that it applies to humans. And this article on the left-hand side shows that for the last 20 years, our outcomes, despite surfactants and despite corticosteroids, have not improved. And in fact, bronchopulmonary dysplasia is increasing. So here we are. Why zero separation? It produces toxic stress and it has adverse impact on maternal and on infant outcomes. And the outcome is vulnerability in the first instance. Not everybody is vulnerable, gets sick, but you're more likely to become sick and diseased when you have this vulnerability. In contrast, when in the first thousand minutes, I'm back to that at the bottom of the slide just to remind you, we have the baby regulating and the mother sensitizing and breastfeeding established, that's our definition of, of kangaroo mother care that you, you heard uh, described just now in the introduction. Then we achieve health, but we achieve resilience, opposite of vulnerability. And this resilience means that we have a much greater chance, assurance of health as opposed to disease. And that green bar at the bottom is, is a spectrum. 
to show that it's a whole population with more health on one side and less health on the other side, purely related to buffering protection of adult support. Now, I call this nurture science. Nurture is, is, is not a scientific word when I was in medical school, but let's understand what it is. Now, part of what I mentioned was the mother's sensitization. And I haven't mentioned her up to now, I need to include her. And here you see sensitivity connections, interactions between the mother and the child that alters the maternal brain to make her more protective to her child. And this applies to a host of hormones. It's the interaction of hormones that makes connections uh, that actually establishes what we call signaling uh, messages that bond the mother and the infant. It takes 20 hours, 16 hours, 20 hours, one day. There's a lot of circuits in the maternal brain that have to change. A number of different hormones involved. And the key hormone in this picture that you can't see, but the reference I'll provide for you is dopamine. And the connection of dopamine to oxytocin is what accomplishes resilience, is what accomplishes the capacity to lower cortisol fast. And that is how you define resilience as opposed to vulnerability because oxytocin, dopamine, and cortisol circuits overlap. And the stronger the reward dopamine circuit is, the more resilience. The stronger the fear circuit is, the more vulnerability. And this is a direct effect of early nurture. And so resilience is defined as the capacity to maintain healthy emotional functioning in the aftermath of a stressful experience. And that is what keeps you healthy. So I've got a summary of, of nurture science that I've just sketched to you as briefly as I can. And, and more details are published in these two references. And these slides will be available to you afterwards. I've already sent them to the organizers. So the first thousand minutes are determining. I want to just show a little bit also some of the science here. One more step. Uh, this is from the focus of attention being very, very early. I'm showing that there are four arrows in the first circle and only one coming later. It's at the beginning that caregiving, regulatory and buffering systems are critical, established at birth. And the first thing is to know, am I safe? Depending on I'm safe or unsafe, my emotion systems are regulated and my stress biology is regulated. So the top of the hierarchy is threat appraisal. And determined by that, the more buffering you get, the stronger is your emotion regulation. The less buffering you get, the stronger is your stress regulation as in cortisol. And so resilience is the objective of what you accomplish when we connect oxytocin and dopamine receptors in the first thousand minutes of life. This is nurture science. And I'm referring to some of these slides that I showed earlier. So the first thousand days begin in the first thousand minutes. And this, am I right speaking? I can hear noise. This is nurture science. Now, some people think nurture and science is an oxymoron. These are two contradictory words. And so I want to make a very unusual departure at this point. I want to talk about ethics. The four ethical principles. And here we are, non-maleficence, beneficence, justice, and autonomy. And so when I make a decision for an adult, eh, all of these principles have to be considered one by one, and I have to make the best possible weighting of these decisions. Now, non-maleficence is the defining feature of evidence-based medicine. We do randomized controlled trials, and then we make systematic reviews. And the definition of a systematic review is that it lowers risk. So non-maleficence translates into science as risk reduction, as evidence-based medicine. I hope you're okay with that. Beneficence, on the other hand, is doing good, actively doing good. Now, what I want to point out here is that uh, the difference between beneficence and non-maleficence in my nurture science mind map is that risk reduction is what I do when I reduce toxic toxic stress. 
but it's not enough to reduce toxic stress. It's necessary to nurture. It's necessary to enhance health. Health enhancement requires active, positive support of the processes that are going to accomplish signaling of the hormone connections. Health enhancement requires beneficence actively, not just maleficence, non-maleficence. And so ensure needed neural processes are taking place as an active ensure needed neural processes are taking place. So risk reduction, yes, we want to get rid of those bad things that I showed you earlier. Now, justice. This is the ethical principle that every child deserves this. It's about applying health resources equally, distribution, rationing of resources to the whole population. And remember, I spoke about the whole population is benefited by having a policy, a practice in the country that exercises this. Autonomy is the more familiar purposes. We talk about informed consent and privacy. Now, though autonomy might be the most important thing to me and you as an adult, and this carries equal weight actually with all the other principles, for children, this is not so. Children do not have autonomy. And the ethicists have spent a great deal of time after this since the Second World War, and the principle is not that the child has autonomy or that the doctor or the parent has that autonomy. The principle is called the best interests of the child are paramount. It comes from the convention of the rights of the child to protect and promote the rights of children that are necessary to fulfill their needs. Children do have rights and those rights impose obligations on adults to be advocates for children in exercising and achieving those rights. I'm lifting out this word, an obligation on the adult to be advocates. Are we all right? And so uh, the first thousand days begin with the first thousand minutes I'm imposing now as an obligation and we should advocate for children in this respect at birth because that's when outcomes are determined. And so I have to make this point because some of these very, very simple things are nice to have and they're not in anybody's job descriptions. And because of that, we're too busy and we don't have time for nice to haves and therefore they don't happen. And therefore in the immediate kangaroo mother care study that we've completed and that we hope to publish very soon, we employed kangaroo mother care supporters to ensure that only those very specific things were done. And so kangaroo mother care, we combined with a concept called the doula. And uh, we call that uh, the kangaroo. They used here a picture of my wife. She's the kangaroo. And the active processes that require to wire the father's brain at birth. It takes less than an hour to do that. But it takes about six hours to wire the baby's brain. And I already mentioned it takes 20 hours to wire a mother's brain. Some mothers come in with wired brains but a completely new brain can be totally rewired in 20 hours with zero separation. So what does zero separation mean practically? Our time is short and I'm hoping to share with you a video. It's 90 seconds long and I'm going to try and keep quiet while I show this video to you. <laughs> Du är så Ja, är det Ja. Ja. Ja, 
Ja, det ligger där. Det är klart. Det är klart. Du är så bra. Ja, nej, det är det. Ja, men att det är... Ja, det ligger två. So what you see in this video is a baby that's 31 weeks gestation. It's been two days on corticosteroids because the mother's sick. But it's not an emergency that you're observing. At 15 seconds, you see that plastic has been covered and those towels are warm. At 20 seconds, CPAP has been provided. The father is involved in this. Auscultation before one minute shows that the condition is good. At 55 seconds, the monitor has been attached as a result. At 90 seconds, you see maternal connection taking place. And throughout this time, the cord has not been cut. This we can do to a 30 week baby. We can do it to every baby. There's no reason why babies should be separated for any reason. And therefore, zero separation means immediate at birth. 29 plus four in this particular case, 1180 grams. Quickly gonna share some few slides. Zero separations means that, yes, I can do this on premature, small, sick babies, but, but only because it's a normal way of caring for all babies. Our every baby should be receiving zero separation. Yes, now we have small babies and we have sick babies. They need the zero separation. They need a bit more than that, but they still need zero separation. They need procedures. And so here you see a procedure being done. The drip is placed while in skin to skin contact. Continuous means that phototherapy can be given in skin to skin contact. Safe technique is a very important detail. And this technique must secure a patent airway. It must ensure that it continues and therefore so that maternal sleep is protected and provided and not just risk reduction, health enhancement. Sleep is absolutely necessary. And therefore, it means that even the smallest and sickest babies are fed and provided access to suckling during skin to skin contact and during CPAP. It means we add technology. Uh, whatever technology we have, we add it early on immediately CPAP uh, in the video you saw after 20 seconds. Uh, it means that we transport infants in this way. Uh, and what we've developed in the immediate kangaroo mother care study is the mother NICU. If we're gonna have a zero separation, Mothers and babies need to be provided care in the same bed. This picture shows uh, a ward round taking place in Saftarjung Hospital uh, by obstetricians and by neonatologists at the very same moment uh, at the same bedside. And therefore, it also means pulling in a new set of people into the neonatal unit called surrogates, whether they're aunties or whether they're grandmothers. In Sweden, they're generally fathers. Uh, in our study, we didn't do that other than mother should be provided, the family we provide care. <coughs> Excuse me. It also means um, the new health carder that I've introduced, the kangaroola, and somebody who's always at the bedside to make sure that this begins, that ensures safe transport, that ensures feeding taking place, uh, early milk expression. And I want to add the little ethical rider here that the kangaroola is the only practical way of achieving justice in terms of ethics, in terms of ensuring that the whole population, even of India, uh, can get this zero separation. And therefore, this involves profound systems change uh, and immense amount of work that nobody wants to do. Everybody is in favor of progress. Nobody likes change. Nobody wants to change is one of the facts of life. And this is a little bit the reality for which reason I have felt the need to share with you this ethical injunction, the best interests of the child are paramount. And therefore the best interests of the child are that the first thousand days should begin in the first thousand minutes with skin to skin contact, kangaroo mother care, and zero separation. 
I've kept time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Dr. Uh, Niels, Niels Bergman for, for an exciting talk. And uh, uh, if people have questions, can you just put them in, in, the, in the chat box so we can uh, answer them there. Uh, I would now uh, invite Dr. Parag Dagli uh, to introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Natali Chapak. Dr. Parag. Hi, thank you, Somsekar. Uh, I'm audible, right? Yes. Yeah, you're audible. So I'm indeed uh, happy to introduce Dr. Natali Charpak after that excellent lucid storytelling by Dr. Niels Bergman. Uh, Dr. Natali is a founder director of mm -hmm. uh, Kangaroo Foundation, Bogota, Colombia, where it actually started in 1994. And she's uh, the co-founder of International Network of KMC Foundation. And she is running excellent follow-up program, particularly in Colombia regarding after KMC. And she has received many prestigious awards and original research papers on different aspects of kangaroo, including one which was having a 20-year follow-up of uh, babies who have received kangaroo mother care at birth and versus traditional care. I hand over to Dr. Kanga, uh, Natalie for, their, for her presentation. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dr. Natalie, can you go ahead and please uh, share the presentation? Uh, thank you. Dr. Natalie, you must be muted. I'm not sure. Can you make sure that? Yeah, she is started. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hey. Hello, hello. Can you see? Hello from Colombia. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen. We can see you and we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. So uh, I will say that uh, as usual, you did not give me an uh, easy, uh, uh, easy uh, talk because follow-up uh, is a heavy topic. But I will try to go through the follow-up very quickly, so uh, let's begin. Uh, thank you for this invitation, and uh, thank you for inviting me to speak on this topic, because usually I am more teaching this topic, but not speaking, so it's a little bit different. So I am going to show you how is the structure of the Kangaroo Mother Care Program where we are doing the follow-up here in Colombia and the experience finally of more than 25 years in this follow-up. So, mm -hmm. it's not, let me see why. Uh, you were right. I don't know why once again. Yeah, can you click in the middle of the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, normally I I will say I will do it like this if it's not possible. Which quality of not I mean, a group of activities uh, that we are using to implement uh, the kangaroo mother care intervention, and we are following the kangaroo mother care method. If I can uh, just explain it like this. Uh, the kangaroo mother care method, uh, I, I mean, you, you are practicing that. It's, uh, as Neil says, a kangaroo position, Ideally, 24 hours a day, beginning as soon as possible, at birth if it's possible, kangaroo nutrition based on breastfeeding, and the discharge policy, which is an early discharge with a close and strict outpatient follow-up, up to 40 weeks, then from 40 weeks to one year of COVID age. The target population, all the infants, uh, the infant, less than 37 weeks or less 
uh, then I think that's very important of less uh, than, uh, let me move that because uh, yeah, of less than 2.5 kg. Why I'm saying that? Because they are all going in the kangaroo follow-up. We, we are accepting all this target population. So the kangaroo position, the kangaroo nutrition, and the kangaroo follow-up. And here you have some photos of your kangaroo follow-up a lot of years ago, but I'm sure that Dr. Reka will present it, uh, uh, will present her follow-up. So we, we are following uh, these technical guidelines from the Health Ministry uh, of Colombia, and they were updated in 2017 uh, with um, especially the nutritional part. So we all are following these guidelines, these official guidelines, and it allows us, because in these guidelines, we have uh, a table with all the activities defined by the health ministry that we must give to a baby, uh, to a baby, uh, a premature baby or low birth weight infant that he must receive during the follow-up. So what is interesting is that we were able to put a price to each of these activities, uh, um, then uh, to do a kangaroo package, then to offer it to health insurance, private or public health insurance. So there is actually 60 kangaroo mother care program in Colombia uh, and fighting for health insurance to respect uh, the package. And that's very important. And the cost in Colombia from birth to one year is 1000 around $1,000. I want to be clear that it's not the price with neonatology. It is only the price of the kangaroo program. And with kangaroo, we were able to demonstrate to health insurance that we were decreasing time of hospitalization in overall uh, in average 10 days so 10 days is more than the cost of uh, the congo program up to one year so actually i am not going to speak about that but we are uh, probably uh, the congo package is a very important step to be able to develop a congo program and a follow-up at least up to one year um, how is the intervention actually? How is the intervention? You can see here, I, I try to put this because it's very different um, of the original intervention as it was created in Colombia. I mean, you are doing kangaroo, even if you do resuscitation immediately after delivery. And I think that the video of Niels showed it very well. You are doing kangaroo to refer the baby. You are doing, uh, if the baby is stable, you put it immediately with the mother. In the neonatal care unit, you will use kangaroo. In intensive care and intermediate care, eventually you have a ward. And then you do on discharge in Colombia in KMC with a follow up program. So there is all a logical progression in the implementation of kangaroo uh, since birth. And you begin with the skin contact, then the breastfeeding, you empower the mother and the family, then you do the home discharge. Yes, and I'm not going to speak about the intrahospitalary kangaroo because there is no time for that. And I believe that this part of the kangaroo, you are doing it uh, very well. Uh, we must try to give to the family uh, the, uh, the, the tools to do kangaroo and to do kangaroo if possible 24 hours. You can see on the photo that in Colombia, the, the chairs are not very comfortable, but uh, they are going to do at least 12 hours. And if they do it well, they go home because what we are doing is preparation of kangaroo in the unit to give the early discharge. We are transferring the care to the family. And when they are feeling that they are able, they will go home if the baby is 
uh, growing well in the unit. So you can see here photos of the preparation in the neonatal unit in the teaching hospital. So we begin as soon as possible at birth uh, in delivery room. Then we continue here and uh, we are trying here it's a photo that I took uh, in your country, that's in Spain, that's in Colombia. So the first two days we are going to train the mother to teach the mother how to do kangaroo. Then the third day we are waiting for the mother to be able to do it. So once she's trained, she will go home. And we train the father too, yes? So you can see here photos that I took when I was in your country. I have a lot of admiration. So um, we transfer to the family. There is a lot of text in my slides, but I will let the slides so uh, to you. It's not a problem. You can just ask me uh, the presentation. So uh, we transfer to the family uh, all the knowledge to be able to care the baby at home. So all this part of uh, uh, kangaroo um, uh, at home is really a very important, uh, very important component for us. Yes, it's like home neonatology, if I can say. It's a little bit, uh, yes. So uh, we adapt the mother in the unit, then she will go home. In average, they are coming, uh, they will come uh, in the program. And uh, we know that we are asking a lot to them, but it's only a short time. So they will do it. And anyway, when the baby was hospitalized, we were asking them to come each day uh, too. So where are we implementing the Congo program? We are implementing it in a, a hospital. I want to say that Bogota has 50 units, no natal unit, but only 15 kangaroo mother care program because you cannot implement a kangaroo mother care program in all the hospital. It's not cost effective. So we need a volume to be able to do what we are doing. <laughs> yes, and we are doing it in hospital. Yes, because if you have an emergency, uh, it's a neonatal emergency and it's important to work with people able to, to manage uh, this uh, newborn. Yes, and we have a multidisciplinary team with pediatrician, nurse, psychologist, social worker. That's the nucleus of the, of the Congo program. So we have eligibility criteria for discharge for the infant, for the mother, and for the family. I'm not going to describe them, but here are the three slides uh, describing this child uh, criteria. So uh, you have criteria for the child, of course. So he must uh, uh, demonstrate the adequate weight gain with kangaroo and the incubator eventually for at least three days. Yes, if he's older than 10 days, he mustn't have in, any treatment. Uh, eventually in Colombia, he can have oxygen because of dysplasia. He must be breastfed and uh, or able to, to, to be fed by the mother. And there is a kangaroo program available to offer a follow-up. Yeah, that's very important. And he regulates temperature in kangaroo position. For the mother, there is criteria for discharge. She accepts to participate, to come back. She was able to manage her baby. She's feeling she's able to take care of her baby. She doesn't have uh, any drugs, uh, uh, any this kind of problem, and she must have the support of her family. And there is criteria of the family. The family must be agreed that the mother is not coming back home to work. She, uh, yes, to work for her baby. She will carry the baby 24 hours. Uh, the family must be trained to help her when she's going to take a shower, when she's perhaps uh, she needs uh, to go to the bathroom. She, they must understand the method. So that's very important. The family must be, must be agreed to help because if not, it can be really dangerous. 
Yeah, so yes, we have criteria. You can see here a photo at home in Colombia. It's a mother with her kangaroo baby. The father was coming back from the work and he was carrying the baby, a little, his little daughter, while the mother was able to go to the bathroom to take the shower and all, all personal things. So uh, it is very important. So the other thing, uh, we are doing it in a, a big room, uh, the kangaroo program, but of course uh, the consultation the clinical assessment will be individual. Yes, but it allows us to, to teach to all the people uh, in the room. And that's very important. Uh, sick children, we will see them outside because we have 25% of infants with oxygen. Yes, and this open consultation, this group consultation, it allow us to manage better the anxiety of the parents, to teach uh, them each time to repeat what they must do at home. We can ask an older kangaroo mother to explain how to do. They can uh, discuss between uh, themselves. And we know that it's another time. We know it's demanding for the parents to come for a few days each day, yes, but after, uh, after, I mean, if they are in the unit, we do the same. Yes, only for a few days. After it will be uh, each week. So you can see this kind of consultation. This one is in Madagascar, uh, in Colombia. And here is all the team of the Medellin Kangul program. So there is two steps in the ambulatory follow-up, up to 40 weeks and from 40 weeks up to one year. For us, 40 weeks is very important. You cut another time the umbilical cord, yes, because uh, it's, a, it's a very special uh, date and we are going to explain it to the parent that the work is going to be very heavy up to 40 weeks. Yes, but the benefits it's for all the life of the baby and their life. So we have to be, uh, to be agree on the cut point of 40 weeks. Yes, it's an agreement, uh, agreement between the team and the parents, yes. We will look at the last, uh, son the first sonography in the first trimester, the last menstrual date, the balar, and we will agree on this date. Yes, we are of course looking at anthropometric parameter, uh, full clinical assessment. We will ask for brain sonography and ophthalmological uh, screening. We are looking how the baby is uh, taking the breast, how the mother is managing uh, to breastfeed her baby because we must be sure that everything is well done. We will look if the baby needs oxygen and if there is support and she will go home with her baby. The Likra bond is very important for us because uh, without she will not carry the baby 24 hours. So after discharge, our goal is 15 grams per kg per day up to 37 weeks. Then from 37 to 40 weeks is eight to 11 grams per kg per day, 8.8 centimeter and head circumference 0.5 to 0.8. We just accept that the baby can lose weight in the first 10 days when they are going at home uh, at six hours, because sometimes or, or in the first 24 hours, so we have to wait. What are we going to do with the weight? The most important thing is to do the course, because we do a routine follow-up, so look at that. You can see here that what it was, this curve, I can share them with you without any problem. It was not easy. Here it was in weeks, and here it is in months. Here you have the phantom curves and here you have the WHO curves. So this is a unique graphic we are using and it allows us to see how the baby is growing. That's very important. We have it for weight, for height, height and the head circumference. So if doing the curve is really something very important. So we have different strategies in when the weight gain is not adequate. 
we will use a hind milk technique. We will look if the mother is carrying her baby in kangaroo position. Because if she's not carrying the baby in kangaroo position, we will see it immediately. Because the baby will use the, the milk to, to be warm, so it will not grow. Yes, and finally at the end, if she's not, we can decide to use fortifier or preterm formula. So we have, we will repeat the advice on child care when the parents are coming to the follow up. On bathing, we don't bath the baby uh, up the moment he's ready, getting temperature outside the position. Yes, we explain the mother that she can move, of course, she can move at home, she can do small activities and to sleep, her or the father, we ask them uh, 15, 30 degree, not semi-seating, but uh, at least 15 and 30 degrees to reduce the risk of apnea and reflux. We publish uh, this year a systematic uh, review on kangaroo and apnea and kangaroo and duration of kangaroo mother care, showing that if the mother can carry the baby more time, the baby will grow better. So 24 hours is very important. The duration, at the moment the baby is asking to go out, when he's regulating temperature, he is not comfortable, and he will sweat, and he will cry, and he will ask to go out. Neurological assessment at 40 weeks, we are doing the amiel Kisson test. So I know that pediatricians are doing neurological tests, but the important thing is to be able to do a systematic one so you are able to see how is your cause. So we uh, are using this one who allow us to look at the active and passive tone uh, of the axis and of the neck. And uh, it, it was really a good uh, instrument, uh, a good tool uh, to have an idea of what can happen. This thing is with 19,000 infants. It's just to show you when the baby is asking to go out. Look, it's a ghost school. 38 weeks, 2.5. At this moment, the baby is not agreed. So if you have a 38 weeks and is 1.5, he will fight very soon to go out because he has a maturation to regulate temperature. So it's not easy. He can be very little and not agree to stay uh, in the in the Congo position. And we do ophthalmological screening because really it's something very important. I mean, to avoid the rope. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, this is a rope, uh, the retinopathy of prematurity was the first reason of blind infants in South America a few years ago. So it's really some, uh, something very important. The high risk follow-up. So here I am going to go very quickly because the time is running. It's not easy to do this in 25 minutes. So we are looking to do to somatic growth, detection of audition, of thermological, neurological, and psychomotor sequence, yeah? So, uh, of course, physical examination. At, after 40 weeks, the baby will come each one month and half. We will look at the somatic growth. We will introduce a complementary feeding. So that's very important to use the curves. That's a photo from your computer. To use these curves of WHO because you already have a vision how the baby was here. And here we just put the WHO curve. So you will see if the baby is growing well or not. Between four months and six months of coveted age, Corrected age, if he's not going well, we will begin the complementary food. We will not give artificial milk. Yeah. So we are looking at the neuromotor. Yes. So we have this sign from the Amiel Kisson test. Only the only one we have to wait at least three months to have it is a stretch reflex of the food, but all the others, we can have them and look at them during uh, the, the follow-up. But we are doing the infanib too. I am not going, I will, I will just go through the infanib now because there is no time. I want to show you the Griffiths too, but I can tell you we choose the infanib because it has a good 
uh, specificity and sensitivity, and especially when you have a high rotation of people. And what is interesting is good to detect something not normal. And it's what we want. So we are doing it at three, six, nine, and 12 months of corrected age. So if something is not normal, we immediately be begin physical uh, therapy. Yeah. So uh, kangaroo and cognitive development. I mean, we, we, did, we, we choose, you must understand that you have the education of the family is something very special. So if you teach well since the beginning, you will have a high stimulation uh, for child development by this family. Yeah, this kind of care like kangaroo care, it's really something who can modify family environment and paternal involvement, yeah? And it help, I mean, uh, that's resilience. So resilience from prematurity, that's very important. Yes, so uh, let's let's go. Sorry, but I, I want to show you some little things. So the Griffey Mental Development Scale two, there is one advantage: it's free and legal. Yeah, so it's very difficult to find it since it's free, and now you have a Griffey three and Griffey four to sell them. But the two is legal and free, and it's interesting because it will look at all this. You have one to five subscale, locomotor, personal, social, hearing and language, hey hand coordination and performance. So we are looking at that. We are looking with the mother. We are giving exercise. Yes, it takes 40 minutes. You can see if the mother know her baby, if she is a primary caregiver. Yes, and it, uh, it is... Uh, the, the little Brilliant. toys are not expensive, yes? So uh, we use one scale of the Bailey 2, which is free too for the behavior. So I will let you the presentation. So we do uh, immunization. We are using exasim actually, yeah, and acellular pertussis. So let's go on and we are doing the rotavirus too, is not there, but we are doing the rotavirus now. So, and I wanted just to show, I have one minute, I will show you just some result of the 43,000 infants we have. Don't look here, I just look by a gestational age or weight or if they have oxygen, if they are the poorest, if they are the richest. So the global on 43,000 between 2001 and 2020 in the Excellence Center, I will just show you the sequence. I mean, there are high risk baby. So look at that. I mean, these, one, these babies here, they did have surgery, laser. So we avoid blind infant, 5% of the less than 30, 6% of the less than 1,000. So that's why it's so important, yes, to do that during the follow-up and to choose at which moment you are going to do it to all of them. So somatic growth with these uh, rules, look, three kilo here, like nearly nine kilo, actually it's nine kilo at one year of coveted age. Everything is at coveted age. Yes, 72 centimeter and 45, that's okay. Of course, the more, the more little is the one than the less than 1,000 because they have intrauterine growth retardation very often. Yes. So neurological exam, look how it grow here. Then it go down. Because we do intervention. You have a brain growing. It's exactly the good moment. So you must detect any variation in the neurological exam to be able to do the early intervention. Look at here, I mean, it's very important. Yes, and there is equity. It's nearly the same when they are the poorest of the richest. That's the IQ. So you have more problem, of course, when they are more immature, when you have intrauterine growth retardation, or they are less than 30. Audiometry, you have baby with a decrease and of the audition. And we have problem here, you know, myopia. If you have a, a baby with myopia, 
you will have a delay in the psychomotor uh, development just because you need glasses. So breastfeeding, of course, kangaroo uh, is helping, but mothers are working at three months, so it's not easy. Loss to follow up around 20%. And readmission, it's a high risk follow up. That's evident. You cannot, so for this reason, the follow up is so important. And vaccine, thank you very much. I finish. Thank you very much, Dr. Nathalie. Thank you. you have given some of the very important points which I wanted here. And I do appreciate the time was very short, but still it was very, very useful to us. And we will have the question answers in the end. Please. Okay. So, uh, we, are, yeah. now we are going ahead with the next talk. Uh, actually, it's going to be a joint talk by uh, Dr. Ekha Udani and, and Dr. Ruchi Nanavati. Uh, both, of, both, both of them uh, were working in uh, KEM hospital. Dr. Rekha Odani uh, has uh, since retired and then worked uh, in Diva Patel, Patel Medical College. And currently, Dr. Ruchi Nanavati heads the uh, HGS Medical College. Uh, Dr. Rekha Odani and Dr. Ruchi Nanavati, both of them have Will worked together and again uh, doing a lot of KMC related work and research. Uh, uh, which has been published. Uh, Dr. Rekha Oden has published more than uh, 180 papers uh, so far and has had more than 250 to 300 research papers. She is a recipient of the Hens Fellowship in Neonatology and also the gold medal in the National Neonatology Conference uh, as well as in, in the NNF conferences. Uh, she was actually one of the steering committee members of the International Network uh, Networking in Kangaroo Mother Care, uh, the one which was founded along with Dr. Natali Charpak uh, and, and others. Uh, so, uh, and Dr. 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 Uchi Nanavad is the current Can you hear of the uh, department. Uh, yes, wait, ma'am. Yeah, just a minute, ma'am. And uh, she would be following up with, uh, after Dr. Uh, Uda Udani completes. Just hold on, ma'am. Uh, yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Dawal. Oh, Dawal. <laughs> Madam, we can hear you. Madam, we can hear you. You can go okay. ahead. We can hear you. Good evening, my friends. I am thankful to the organizer for inviting me to speak on Kangaroo Mother Care Follow-up Program at KM Hospital in India. Kangaroo Mother Care Early Discharge and Regular Follow-up is the third component of Kangaroo Mother Care, which all of you know. And it is an alternative to prolonged hospitalization required in conventional care. Kangaroo mother care follow-up has not been paid much attention so far. It needs to be promoted more aggressively so as to achieve successful outcome in terms of quality survival of our high-risk low birth weight babies and reduction in mortality. KM Hospital was chosen a center of excellence by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and received the grants from them. Survival of preterms exponentially increasing in India and attention to long-term consequences and minimizing disability is essential. Preterm survivors in low birth weight infant more frequently exhibit neurological and behavioral impairment, cognitive deficit, poor academic performance or attention problems later in life. KMC follow-up is needed to monitor general well-being and adequate physical growth to assess neuromotor, neurosensory, and psychomotor development, also to detect illness at early stages and initiate proper management, to ensure that the mother has understood advice regarding administration of supplementary micronutrients like iron, calcium, and vitamins, and for compliance of immunization, and to make sure that mother and helpers can recognize danger signs and seek prompt care at suitable level. 
This lecture will cover KMC implementation, challenges faced, requirement for follow-up clinic, and key messages for successful follow-up. Pangal Mother Care was started after reading few literature in the year 2000. Randomized control trial was planned on kangaroo mother care and kangaroo bag was created. In 2003, a team of doctor and nurse went to Bogota and learned about good practices of kangaroo mother care. After coming from Bogota, six sensitization seminars were held at KM hospital for healthcare providers looking after mother and child and developed training material. In 2004, KMC grants came from the SNN for KMC application for high risk, low birth weight babies in KM hospital, all areas of mother and children, KMC dissemination and ambulatory KMC. Mothers after discharge go home and they are, con they are asked to continue Kangaroo Mother care and come for follow-up clinic. And this is the way one can allow the baby to reach at 40 weeks of, three, 40 weeks of gestation and for the small for gestational age babies to reach 2,500 grams. And then they are followed up after, after they become full term or they become 2,500 grams. For implementation, KMC committee was formed, KMC proposal was made asking permission to implement and also to accept the grants. Made authorities understand the importance of kangaroo mother care and application for survival of high risk low birth weight babies. File was not moving. So personal follow-up of file at each stage for moving from one table to another table to hasten the process. Because SNL had given the guidelines and calendar for working. Month monthly meeting of KMC committee members were met to resolve the problems. Excuse me, madam. This the is challenge was there that to search for the place administration section for the proposal and approval by various departments and accepting the grant took about nine months. Then for renovation of uh, ambulatory KMC, appointment of architect, san sanction of plan, renovation of temporary KMC and permission took another 13 months. So ultimately, the location has to be away from the hospital environment to prevent exposure of small babies to infection, which I had seen in Bogota. Several rounds were made in and around KEM hospital to find the place. Then at the end, we found one unutilized storeroom, which had 10 corners and we decided to have because it was away from the hospital environment. Angaru Ambulatory Care Center was implemented with the personnel trained in KMC and recruited project manager, four staff nurses, one medical social worker, one data operator, and all of them were trained for Kangaru Mother Care, breastfeeding and lactation management, equipments, uh, furniture, supplies of drugs, stationary audiovisual facilities were made available. Inauguration of temporary KMC was made here. This is the temporary KMC. We could manage all the furniture from the stores of a KM hospital and started. And later, after renovation, uh, inauguration was done on our Independence Day. This is our renovated KMC. Separate areas were allocated like registration, then the growth monitoring where the height and length and the head circumference done, examination and counseling, then early intervention area, breastfeeding area, 
and this is the waiting area where the health talk was given. During every follow-up visit, details about KMC given in hours at home, details about breastfeeding, growth assessment and monitoring using appropriate growth chart, developmental assessment, illnesses if any, availability of sufficient stock of supplements, proper immunization, mother's concern, special follow-up visits for hearing and visual estimation and USB. Generally, sonography is done at the time of discharge, but maybe afterwards. And next follow-up visit date is given. This is the KMC chart. You can see where the every day mother has to write how many hours she has given KMC. And this is the dances chart where the growth was monitoring. We had given pink performa in booklet for the female KMC baby and blue for the male KMC babies. Almost about 700 to 1,000 babies were, came, were given KMC from 2005 to 2009. And the, those babies, almost about 64% to 78% babies were followed up. 50 workshops, 50 training programs, uh, and guest lectures were given during the period. And, uh, pediatricians, obstetricians, community health care pro providers, and nursing personnel were, were trained and targeted mainly the medical colleges, Western and Southern India. Training material, modular training uh, was uh, applied, and this, is, uh, and this is the booklet for educating the doctor, educating the nurses and the healthcare personnel. Community was educated by way of newspapers, printing media in different languages. So the key to successful Kangaroo Mother K, Shishugar, we named that is Shishugar, because there was a dedicated staff for KMC implementation at all the places like labor room, KMC ward, NICU, transitional care. And all these KMC babies, mothers were given training material with a very easy language with pictures to understand them. Follow-up was dedicated to only KMC babies of KM hospital, frequent counseling of mothers and family members, health talk to relatives by sister in charge in NICU. Before discharge, relatives were asked to visit KMC follow-up center. Emphasis was given on KMC proper, KMC position, duration as long as possible, preferably 24 hours, breastfeeding, and regular follow up at each visit. Health talk by the nurse and showing video almost every two to three times a day for the relatives. Follow up next visit dates are given and recorded in the diary as well as in the booklet. If they, have not, they do not report on the follow-up day when they were contacted to visit and if not affording, then they were paid for transport. In case baby is sick, they are asked to visit NICU and in NICU, babies were seen on priority basis. Rewards were given for successful KMC duration, exclusive breastfeeding, weight gain and regular follow-up. These are the research which was done during the period of 2001 to 2007. Experience and research proved that KMC and KMC follow-up need replication all over India to achieve millennium development growth and quality survival. KMC is a team. My acknowledgements are due to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai, KM Hospital, resident doctors, nursing staff, KMC mothers, and family members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rekha Odani. Yes, Sam Shekhar, please go yeah. ahead. 
Uh, Madam Mudani, can you stop sharing uh, so Dr. Ruchi Nanavati can uh, uh, begin doing a presentation? Uh, Dr. Nanavati, can you uh, please go on? So, as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Ruchi Nanavati uh, has taken off from uh, Dr. Rekha Odane and she continues the head on the hospital of uh, the Department of Neonatology at KM Hospital and St. Jess Medical College, Mumbai. Uh, she is also uh, the head of the West, uh, Western India Resource Center for uh, facility based newborn care initiative where uh, where they uh, invo they are involved in training uh, doctors from all the western regions of india in in, in nicu care uh, madam can you please go ahead and share your presentation uh, no i have to yeah Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am, you're audible and we can see you also. Please begin. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, very good evening. Respected Dr. Bergman, Dr. Nathali Charpa, Dr. Shashivani, Dr. Rekha Udani, my dear colleagues and friends. At the outset, I would like to thank Kangaru Mother Care Foundation India and NNF Gujarat for organizing today's international webinar on Kangaru Mother Care and for inviting me to talk on follow-up program at KEM Hospital. I bring the greetings from said GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, the twin institutions of, reputed twin institutions of Mumbai who have served to humanity for more than 94 years. So the credit of Kangaroo Mother Care follow up program at our institution goes to, you know, mainly Dr. Nathali Charpak, who has been kind enough to come all the way from Columbia, Bogota to KM Hospital. And she has trained us in art and science of Kangaroo Mother Care. Dr. Rekha Udani, we have already heard Dr. Rekha Udani and our sister Rekha Saman. They were trained in Columbia for three weeks in the year 2003. And subsequently, Madam established Kangaroo Mother Care at KM Hospital. And Rekha Saman, you know, she led the team of nurses and did a wonderful job in implementation of KMC amongst the nurses. Now, the another, actually the program took momentum when our student, Dr. Suman Rao, a student then, now she's a consultant for WHO, that she did a randomized control trial on kangaroo mother care. And we saw that the babies who received kangaroo mother care had better growth parameters, weight, length, and head circumference as compared to the infants who received conventional medical care. And all the parameters, they were statistically significantly better in the uh, infants who received KMC. And also the morbidities associated in low birth weight infants like hypothermia, hyperthermia, uh, hypoglycemia, apnea, sepsis, everything was significantly less in the babies who, are, who received kangaroo mother care. And this particular uh, uh, randomized control trial really gave momentum to the implementation of KMC at our institution. And we went ahead with the follow-up care program. And all of us know that, you know, the preterm birth actually uh, desynchronizes the, uh, the baby's development of cerebral and cerebellar pathways. The most important period is from 20 weeks of gestation up to 45 weeks of gestation. That is in, disrupted because of the kangaroo, because of the preterm uh, birth. And kangaroo mother care reestablishes the synchrony between the mother and the fetus, which is interrupted by preterm birth. And we know that the application of KMC coincides with the third trimester induction of genetically programmed myelination and sensory driven functional connectivity. And that's why kangaroo mother care is something so beautiful for the babies because it satisfies all five senses of a preterm infant. We know that the preterm survival, even today, have a lot of issues. They have neurodevelopmental impairment. 
there are cognitive impairment, emotional disturbances, and what we now described as a preterm encephalopathy. With advances in neonatology, sophisticated you know, equipment, treatment, everything, the overall uh, uh, you know, incidence of neurodevelopmental impairment has not changed over the decades. So what do we require for these babies? For be their better neurodevelopmental outcome, we require a good follow-up care program to see that these babies achieve intact survival. And this follow-up care program is a third component of kangaroo mother care, which is relatively neglected component of kangaroo mother care. And especially in our country, we require to work on it still more and see that it reaches all parts of the country. Now, as Madam has already said, when we decided for the uh, implementation of a follow-up care program, we selected a place which was not in the busy environment of the hospital, but it was in the residential premises. And we started with a temporary kangaroo mother care in the year 2004. And in 2005, we renovated it with the grants received from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And we had a state-of-art kangaroo mother care uh, unit which had a mother's waiting area. There was a nursing station, which Madam has already showed you. And there was a counseling station, therapy room for the occupational therapist and a breastfeeding room. So we had a good infrastructure for kangaroo mother care. We had the educational material be prepared in different local languages, Marathi, Gujarati, uh, Hindi, and also prepared a training manual for the nurses and doctors. And we had every policy documented what we are going to do for these babies when they come for follow -up. This we have already seen that we had separate baby record sheets and the baby booklets which were given to them. And in our policies, we had clearly stated that which babies are going to come for follow -up who is going to uh, follow them up, Where, what will be the place of follow-up, what are going to be the scheduled visits, how do we follow up and what do we do with these babies. Now, these were the criteria selected by us for their um, uh, high-risk infants to come to Kangaroo Mother Care Center. So all extremely low birth weight and very low birth weight babies. The babies who had neurological disorders like asphyxia, IVH, meningitis, or any baby who was neurologically abnormal on discharge, the babies who had hypoglycemia with convulsions, the babies with neonatal sepsis, and babies with jaundice who required exchange transfusion. We had a uh, team of uh, you know, doctors and nurses and developmental psychologists, therapists, and medical social worker. Everyone worked together for the welfare of the baby. So this is very, very important. This is, in fact, the first step in the developmental follow-up program that we have a teamwork going on. These were our follow-up schedule that the first visit we asked the mother to come back with the baby in first to two to three days after discharge from NICU to ensure that transition from hospital to home is smooth because in hospital you have so many doctors and nurses, the mother has uh, moral support. At the home, she is the neonatologist for the baby. So just to make sure that everything is going properly, we call the mother two to three days after discharge. Then twice a week till the weight gain was 15 grams per kg per day. Subsequently, weekly till 40 weeks of gestation. And subsequent visits were at the corrected age of six weeks, three months, six months, and longitudinally up to five years of age. Now, in the follow-up clinic, we, had, uh, we have already seen that the components of follow-up uh, clinic are assessment of growth and nutrition, neuromotor assessment, neurodevelopmental assessment, neurosensory assessment, neuroimaging if required, anticipatory guidance to the patients, and record keeping. Now, record keeping is another very, very important because these babies are going to come to you for a longitudinal follow-up and one requires a good record keeping system. Now, as far as the neuromotor assessment is concerned, we uh, initially used ameltison, which is, uh, you know, all of us are aware of ameltison technique. This is a good screening test, and the predictive value at three months for the normal development at 12 months is more than 93%. But uh, we know that it doesn't tell us about the uh, mentor development of the baby, and for that, you require the developmental scale. So initially, we used ameltison, then subsequently, after we had training from, uh, you know, the Bogota team, we also started using Infanic, that is Infant Neurological International Battery uh, System for Assessment of Neuromotor Function of the Babies. This is a good screening test. It is more objective. It has got 20 items and you can easily apply it in a busy office practice. And when the studies have done, it has shown that the results with 
uh, infinib technique are comparable with that of amortization technique so we currently use infinib technique also in our unit which looks at uh, you know the french angle spasticity looks at the head uh, trunk um, uh, motor development vestibular thing and other parameters now with all this uh, this thing you have to do the neuro developmental assessment because you require to look at the other domains so motor domain the neuro motor system assessment can tell you but you also require to look at what is the language development what is the adaptive development and what is the personal social behavior like feeding sleeping habits bladder bowel habits ability of the baby to play adapt to the regulations and for that you require neuro developmental assessment and currently we use bsid 3 for developmental assessment of the babies now as we have already seen the ophthalmic assessment of the babies is important which is done at the age of 4 weeks in the babies who are less than 1750 grams and less than 34 weeks of gestation you repeat it if it is abnormal till retinal vasculature is complete and one also requires to look at optometry at a corrected age two months of corrected age to find out whether there are any problems like myopia in this baby for auditory evaluation it is we do the screening vera uh, in a nisu graduate and it is very easy to remember that you have a rule of 136 so by the age of 1 month you screen the babies by the age of 3 months you confirm the diagnosis and by 6 months the babies are given hearing aid if required so that their language development happens uh, uh, you know in a proper manner now then comes is an early intervention so if the baby has any problem what do we do had to provide therapy to this baby so early uh, intervention consists of identifying a baby who already has a problem or the baby who is at risk of developing handicapping condition and you provide the remedial measures to lessen its effects is called as early intervention and what early intervention we use at our uh, hospital is a bobat therapy it is based on two basic principle one is that you inhibit what is the abnormal tonic reflex activity the baby has and you stimulate or you reinforce whatever is normal so you facilitate the normal higher integrated writing and equilibrium reactions in their proper sequential development so you stimulate that and these are the basic thing which is done by occupational therapy department in our uh, kangaroo mother care center and these are the various uh, you know things which are used for the treatment of babies like this here you can see the baby is just the age of 2 months but you can see that the head control for this baby is you know is too good as far as the 2 uh, months of the baby is concerned 2 months of age is concerned and here you can see that the baby is you know standing with you can make out that uh, the, there is an abnormality the head uh, is there is uh, you know the extension of the head and even the baby has you know the spasticity in the leg so for all this treatment you require the uh, center center for looking after this now when we look at our km follow up data this shows you over last 15 years and you can see that the uh, the follow up is somewhere in the range of about 65 to 70% and the reasons for this optimal follow up what we gather from our data is that the antenatal registrations at km hospital are for the high risk delivery from a distant places now though our uh, you know the national uh, this thing high uh, low birth weight rate is about 18 to 20 percent. Our low birth weight rate is somewhere about 30 to 35 percent, and uh, so we have more babies who are of low birth weight. There are long distances to travel. There is huge traffic in Mumbai, and crowding, uh, traveling in the crowded public transport is a real challenge in Mumbai. Plus, there is a less support in the nuclear family. The father has to go back to work, so that is the reason why we have suboptimal you know, follow up as far as the KMC is concerned. But the babies who have come. to for follow up in the kangaroo mother care they have come you know so you can see here they have come each and every baby has come more than 6 to 8 times a year and these are the total annual visits we have received from these babies over last 15 years now we had a study which was follow up study which was to study the impact of duration of kmc on mortality morbidity on hospital stay and on breastfeeding and one of the we divided into the group which received kangaroo mother care less than 6 hours 6 to 12 hours 
12 to 15 hours and 12 to 20 hours and more than 20 hours. And one can see that exclusive breastfeeding was, uh, you know, universally found very uh, good incidence in all the groups. And that's why you don't have a p-value which is significant. So the exclusive breastfeeding in this babies, when this babies came for follow-up was more uh, than about 90%, which was very, very satisfying. And when we look at the growth of these babies, this is another study on the different cohort which was done that which showed that we looked at how much was the weight gain per kg per day, length uh, increase and the head circumference increase. And again, looked at as per how many hours of KMC these babies had received. And we saw that even at at a follow-up age, subsequently, the baby's weight gain was 10 grams per kg per day. The head circumference, uh, the length increment was 0 0.6 centimeters per week, and head circumference was 0 0.58 uh, no, centimeters per week. This is, you know, this is what we see in our Indian babies, that increment in the length and increment in the head circumference of the babies is not so much satisfactory as, far as, as compared to the weight gain in the babies is concerned. When we look at the weight, uh, weight group of 1500 to 1800 grams, there were similar observations that the weight gain was 10 grams per kg per day, but the length and the head circumference was somewhere about 0.6 centimeter per week. Again, the same observation in the different um, weight per group. When we look at as per the gestational age, the babies were less than 32 weeks they again had a weight gain of about 10 grams per kg per day and the length and head circumference was 0.6 centimeter per week and the head circumference was still lower than 0.54 centimeters per week and we are concerned because it actually tells you the growth of the baby's brain. So this is for the babies who are less than 32 weeks and if we look at the babies between 32 to 36 weeks, again the head circumference and the length increment was in the range of about 0.6 uh, centimeters, where we actually expect somewhere in the range of about 0.8 to 0.7 to 0.8 centimeters per week. So this is what we have looked at the uh, learn from this particular uh, study which we have done in the follow-up. The, that's why we did uh, again a knowledge attitude practice study for these babies that what does these mothers are, you know, what is they have understood from kangaroo mother care. And what we, when we interviewed these mothers and when we spoke to them, what we realized is that, that the most of these mothers had a positive attitude for kangaroo mother care. More than 75% of the mothers had good knowledge regarding kangaroo mother care. Their kangaroo mother care hours increase after discharge at home as compared to the hospital. The uh, Most of the mothers, more than 63% of the mothers were able to give more than 12 hours of kangaroo mother care at home. And the family members greatly helped them in improve, you know, in providing kangaroo mother care. With help of the even elder siblings in the house, the mothers were able to give kangaroo mother care. The areas of concern were that the heat, sweating and discomfort were reported uh, in this particular cohort by more than 50% of the mothers that in sometimes it depends in the weather in Mumbai and in most of the, you know, uh, when in the summer season, these were the complaints by the mothers. And another area of concern was that the mothers were not able to express breast milk while providing KMC. So every time when they have to express the milk, they would take out the baby from KMC put the baby and then express the milk. So automatically the hours of KMC will go down. So looking at this particular thing, especially the second concern when the mothers are not able to express the milk uh, while the baby is in KMC, we did a quality initiative study and we looked at that what is the reason for this and then we realized that, of course, it started with us, that is healthcare workers, that they were the people, you know, the healthcare workers were unaware of the policy the shortage of nurses because you know you have at times one nurse managing more than six to eight or even at times more than that there was lack of awareness among amongst mothers that they have you know that they can express the milk while baby being in kmc position lack of awareness among healthcare workers lack of motivation among healthcare workers because breastfeeding and kmc is something not very glamorous so <clears throat> There was a lack of motivation. In hospital, adaptation was not practiced optimally. When you discharge the babies or when the babies are there in NICU, we have to do 
you know the family to family counseling to each family which was not done very optimally physical discomfort after lscs and no separate kmc ward in our institution probably these were the reasons why uh, you know the mothers were not able to express in kmc position so we looked at policy people procedure place and we changed the thing we did this quality initiative and subsequently we by the end of about four to six weeks we have most of the mothers expressing the milk while baby is in kmc position now with all this when we look at sustainable development goals we talk about good health and well being at all ages and if we look at goal within the goals that is goal 3.2 talks about ending the preventable deaths of newborns and the children under the age of 5 years and answer to this to achieve this goal what we require is implementation of kangaroo mother care similarly the goal within the goal of 3.4 that is to reduce the preterm mortality by one third by the year 2030 and this also can be achieved by using uh, you know by implementing kangaroo mother care and we are we also want their mental health uh, good and good well being and the, i think the answer to this is the implementation of follow up care programs and implementation of kmc early detection of problems and giving them uh, timely intervention so take home message is that the uh, upscaling of follow up care services is the need of the r in india and the regular follow up is mandatory for early recognition of high risk infants for timely early intervention therapy my thanks are due to bill and melinda gates foundation for providing grant to establish uh, the kangaroo mother care centers and center and for renovation of kangaroo mother care center for initial uh, years we also thank national thermal power corporation of india shantilal sanvi foundation for subsequently supporting uh, our program and facility based newborn care initiative of ministry of health and child welfare government of india subsequently supporting our program <clears throat> going on till now and of course this is you know the no work is complete unless you have a good team work the the top picture shows us the team which started with kangaroo mother care when we implemented it uh, in the year 2003 2004 and subsequently over the years I, everyone has contributed to uh, you know the success of the program and my thanks are due to all those who joined the journey of kmc uh, follow up program at km hospital mumbai thank you very much thank you very much dr ruchi <clears throat> am i audible yes ma'am can you go ahead yeah please, please. uh we will have question answers at the end so we request all the presenters and the participants to remain now i have to introduce dr sumita ghosh who is our special invited guest for this evening and she has in spite of her busy schedule she has agreed to spare some time for us she is the additional commissioner in charge of health child health adolescent health safe abortion services aspirational district program and so on and uh, she is working with the ministry of health and family welfare in multiple stages in multiple positions and uh, she has got a lot of clinical experience and experience of training and administration in government with this brief introduction i will request her to start her presentation she has to go in a hurry that is why i am stopping here thank you very much dr sumita please start with your presentation uh, dr sumita you want me to, you want me to share the presentation uh, or will you be sharing I, I can share it for you if if you want me to share. Uh, madam, we can't hear you. Uh, uh, I, I we can't hear you. Sir, so just ask her like. Yeah, please help her out. Uh, no, madam. मैडम तो म्यूट नहीं है बट वी नहीं मैडम म्यूट नहीं है लेकिन उन्होंने ज्वाइन कौन से डिवाइस से किया है मैडम फ्रॉम विच डिवाइस यू हैव ज्वाइंट 
कंप्यूटर दिखता है मुझे आई थिंक इट्स कंप्यूटर इट्स कंप्यूटर देन आई डोंट नो इफ शी हैज आई लास्ट कर बाय फोन यस मैडम या या मैम फोन से बात कर दीजिए बिकॉज़ शी आई आई डोंट थिंक शी शी इज नॉट म्यूटेड बट वी कांट हियर हर um uh, people can ask questions in the chat and uh, if you have seen already oh, madam you require any help hmm. yeah we are not able to hear you uh, can i ask our people to help you out okay uh dr mohit is she muted from there no she is not she is not and uh, she is uh, need some help okay madam can okay so we will continue with question answers and she will rejoin now huh okay, okay. in the when meanwhile she, madam just tell yeah. her if when she rejoins she has to take the option of uh, using the computer audio along computer audio she has to you play. will have to use the option of computer audio i believe you have and okay thank you yeah we will be rejoining soon but in the meanwhile i would to be answered the first question is to dr nils are you there dr nils yes i am hello yeah so can you answer the question whether kmc can be done during cesarean also means yes, uh, after cesarean section yes i sent a note to that certainly yeah. on full term no, baby i wanted period. everybody to listen to that because yeah please on full term babies it's very easy and straightforward it requires a different set of thinking and some training and some preparations uh, and having got the skill set of doing it on full term babies yes it can be done on very smaller babies uh, practically the smaller babies uh, may then require some equipment and then we've generally shifted to the recovery room in the anesthetic environment uh, so uh, there is a little bit of a distinction with the skill set required to accomplish the technology that preterm babies need at birth specifically cpap was that a good answer uh, yeah. sanji and uh, another thing is how you uh, do you insist on immediate drying and all these procedures can they delay the cord cutting can you answer those questions also with reference to cesarean yes yeah. uh, our experience with the research that we've been doing in the last 2 3 4 years where we've also been working in africa india and scandinavia is that we do thermal control very very badly and therefore i would be emphasizing that we must take greater efforts and strenuous care to ensure that babies do not get cold yes and that must start immediately uh, not the first 1000 seconds but the first 10 seconds uh, was that answer to your question uh, yeah. what was the rest of your question that is the thing and delayed cord cutting what oh, yes. is that yeah yes so so i don't think there's <coughs> any doubt that this is beneficial but i don't think one needs to be too dogmatic and pragmatic uh, valuing that at the cost of other interventions that are also necessary there's some nuance in the answer is necessary yes we should ensure delayed cord clamping as far as possible but we must also ensure safe provision of cpap and ensuring of warmth one more question what about those babies who require resuscitation immediate advance resuscitation can it be still done on mother's chest or you have to separate them it can be done i personally have done it and i know that kim luang chi in ho chi minh city in vietnam has a lot of experience of doing it personally but it also requires a great deal of confidence and a great deal of Uh, experience uh, and uh, i won't hesitate to say is not going well let me be more intensive and i'll separate the baby that needs resuscitation but the early steps of uh, resuscitation can indeed be done in skin to skin contact
hands on mother's chest. Sometimes I avoid doing an intubation on the mother's chest, not because I can't on the baby, but because the mother is in distress. So there's a number of clinical factors, reality checks that we have to bear in mind. Uh, but one can do a great deal uh, on the mother's chest. Practically though, uh, I want to say zero separation, yes. But if I take the baby away for 60 of those seconds that I wanted in the beginning, I do not believe there'll be any harm at all. I think it's a safe thing to do and a practical thing to do if one has any doubts at all, and then you can bring the baby back straight away. So the buffering protection of adult support toxic stress is when that is prolonged. And a thousand oh, seconds is a prolonged period. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, 60 seconds is not. Right. So at least excepting for those life-saving interventions which get priority, rest of the time, as far as possible, we should try to have zero separation. Can we give that message? Certainly. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. And one more question. Here, many times, just because the baby is high risk, they take away the baby and put under a, a radiant warmer or incubator for observation. Is it a good practice? Please do not do that. Yeah. Uh, that's not helping the baby. That means that the observations you're making are continuing to get worse all the time instead of better. Now, any questions from the audience, please? I just put some of the common questions which are raised, frequently asked questions. But any other questions from the audience? Somshekar, do we have any in the question box? Okay, then we request Dr. Natalie to answer some of the questions. Dr. Natalie? Yes. Uh, you did answer a few through the chat box, but the same one I would like you to answer again. Is the gestational age or the weight of the baby is related to duration of KMC? Yes, uh, I mean, I understand that it's not easy, but uh, look, the problem of the premature infant is immaturity. Yeah, and immaturity uh, for thermal regulation, immaturity for the gut, and immaturity of the brain too, yes, is immature. So what we want is to help him to mature in a, 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 a safe environment. Uh, I cannot put it again in uh, the womb of his mother, but I would be happy to be able to do it. So your baby which, who is immature to regulate temperature, when you put it in skin-to-skin -skin contact, it will have a perfect regulation. But when he is uh, mat with the maturation and the time when he arrive uh, around 38 weeks, is not tolerating more kangaroo position. And uh, very often the mother will not say it, but uh, the baby is sweating, crying. She take the baby out. He stop crying. She put the baby uh, in kangaroo position. He began to cry. So uh, that's because uh, he's, uh, he want to move. He want to be outside. And uh, the best thing, uh, it's um, I, I, I follow them uh, and we. 20,000 infants, it is a gross curve, perfect gross curve at 38 weeks uh, of gestational age. So some baby will stay a little bit more, some baby a little bit less, but it's really when the baby is regulating temperature. So what happened with the weight? The baby, if, if it is uh, 32 weeks with 2.2, he will stay six weeks in kangaroo position, yeah? But if he is uh, 37 weeks or six weeks with 1.5, he will tolerate it up to 38, yeah? Two weeks or, or maximum three weeks after he will refuse the kangaroo position. That's really physiology. So we have to accept it. And the best way to know if it's adequate or not, it's to look how he's growing. 
because if he's growing well outside the position at 39 weeks, even with 1.7, that means he's regulating temperature. So for this reason, the goal curve is so important. So I don't know if I was able to, to explain uh, what the concept for us of uh, kangaroo position. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Uh, we will go to the next uh, presentation. Uh, Dr. Sumita is online and can we hear you, madam? Uh, we can see your presentation. Your presentation is already shared. We will continue the question answers after that. Okay. Uh, madam, can you start? Uh, Mohit bhai, uh, what exactly is happening? Because Madam ne to share kar diya hai presentation. She has shared a presentation. I can see that she is uh, not muted and we can see her on the screen. I... Madam, can you start uh, moving the slides and speaking? Dr. Sumita, can you? Yeah, uh, we can. Uh, we have gone to the next slide but uh, we cannot hear you. Sir, I've talked to her on, and she, um, I've just told her to log in through the phone and she can speak on the phone. But she has logged in through the computer, I think, again. No, no, yeah, she has logged in through the computer, but on the, uh, side by side, she can do on the phone also. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think she's 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 running through the phone also, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have admitted her. Yeah, madam, you can start. I think you have, you have spoken through the phone. You can you can start. I think. A phone se baat kar lo, Yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yes. perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for this because uh, there might be some uh, uh, problems uh, with the computer audio. Madam, I if you can, through, madam, I have been listening to sorry, all madam. the very erudite uh, discussions which have been taking place. I am very fortunate to be part of it, and I congratulate uh, KMC Foundation for organizing this international webinar uh, on this National Newborn Week. And uh, this is uh, exactly what is in our mind also, in the ministry also, how, where uh, the newborns, you know, we can help out the newborns. And uh, this, as we can see on the screen, India is a has a large cohort, uh, 2.6 crores, that, that is 26 million babies are born. And 1520, if they, we consider that they are uh, either periterm, or low birth weight. So then again, that translates into a huge number. And with multifarious efforts, India has been able to reduce the NMR till, to, uh, till 2018 reports we have latest, that is 23 per thousand live births. And as, as this, uh, the stalwarts who are present here already know that they are all in the first week, 78% in the first week. And uh, the, the decline rate has been better than the global rate. We have been able to achieve 60% decline. So if we have to reduce further in order to achieve our goal of national health uh, policy, that is 16 per life, uh, thousand life births by 2025 and uh, the INAP goal, uh, Indian Newborn Action Plan goal, single disease by 2030, we have to look at these figures where the deaths are happening and they are happening 50% almost, you know, are in the premature and low birth weight. So our focus is already on this and we are working towards it and kangaroo mother care we know is the single most effective step towards it to reduction of this uh, rate, uh, um, you know, uh, highlighted parts. These are all uh, uh, graphs you are you know better than me. I understand. Uh, so our focus has be always been linked 
with co kangaroo mother care program which improves uh, both the nutrition part uh, prevent infection infection and the psycho psychological bonding and the neuro development so i am not elaborating on this uh, so uh, this again must be known to you uh, that quarter of new bond deaths uh, can be averted uh, so it is always in our focus because all these figures they tell us that severe illness hospitalization they are reduced survival is increased hypothermia and uh, breastfeeding also they are the important components so i am not uh, it is the most powerful intervention which we have in our hand for reducing mortality and one of the very high priority area so brief about the journey uh, 2014 we have released the operational guidelines for rolling out the program across the country it is in our country we advocate less than 2000 uh, grams uh, because of the high load of uh, prematurity we have low birth weight we have Uh, both at the facility level uh, and also at the community level, and uh, all the health facilities countrywide has been advised, guided, and they have adopted KMC practices. We have, in our support to the states and duties, dedicated budget line for supporting the infrastructure required for KMC rolling out KMC in the facilities. for various capacity building uh, uh, programs operational expenses ics and bringing special focus to kangaroo mother care so this has been our program since 2014 at the facilities uh, uh, delivery points we have these are the most important interventions we uh, we are taking uh, at the uh, delivery points Uh, promoting exclusive breastfeeding care of small and sick newborn at essentials and follow up at dic district early intervention centers are there in our rbsk program that is rashtriya bal suraksha karyakram and kangaroo mother care program uh, again is one of the very important component of our uh improving the uh, of our efforts to improve the neonatal survival and i the first presentation i heard about the 1000 uh, minutes so 1000 day program is already ingrained in our health programs and even 1000 minutes also the concept that physiological birthing uh, family participated in care at the delivery facilities uh, and also in the postnatal ward and even in essence use we have promoted mother and newborn uh, care units mnc use so that there is no separation there are least separation and separation uh, non separation as much as practicable so we have promoted that that mother and newborn are together always uh, interventions various interventions are there uh, strengthening our facility based newborn care essentsu nbsu uh, nbsu is newborn stabilization unit which is little uh, lesser than essentsu and uh, less less sick children newborns can be catered to in these facilities and at the delivery points you have newborn care corner uh, after this after the facility there are lot of emphasis of follow up follow up of these newborns by our community health workers they are called ashas here accredited social health activists and we have right now more than 9.5 lakhs of health workers such health workers who are doing community visits for various rmnch activities and now of course covid activities too uh, so they are doing the home visits 
the, for the newborn, uh, six or seven visits, and they are being done on days, uh, you know, till 42 days, six visits, and for home-based, new, home, home-born newborn, seven visits. So this is one of the very well-entrenched program in our system for community follow-up. And we have recently added home-based young child care. So beyond 42 days, five visits are made at three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and 15 months for care of these newborns, giving them nutritional uh, counseling, measuring their growth and developments. So these two programs in community look after the follow-up. And for those especially who are the SNCU discharges, the babies who have been discharged from sick, sick units and the low birth weight and prematures, they are quarterly followed up till one year, which is ingrained in this home-based young care uh, visits. We have another very ambitious program that is RBSK, Rashtriya Bal Saskar Yakram, in that, we have community-based activities as well as facility-based activities. Here, we are doing child screening for four Ds, that is the delays, developmental delays, deficiencies, disorders, and defects, birth defects. So, uh, this ambitious program, which, you know, it uh, from zero to 18 year old children we are working on this and under this again facility based screening and then panganwadi based screening uh, screening and school based screenings are being done and these children who are identified with these four days they are referred to proper facilities and district wise, we have made early intervention centers to look after, especially the defects and the delays, developmental delays that occur because of the sickness in the neonatal periods, especially our uh, you know children who receive kangaroo mother care, detecting any defect, any delay in them for their early childhood care and development. Our ECD program is there, that is first thousand days program. Again, in that we have call centers which regularly look after the discharge, essential discharge patient babies as well as babies who receive kangaroo mother care for, you know, monitoring their growth, their development, any signs of development delay, they go to the, uh, they, they call centers regularly, follow them up. Again, our ANMs have been empowered with management of preterm labor, delivering kangaroo mother care, and breastfeeding support. So, follow up mechanism, which has been discussed till now. They are in our guidelines, as well as we have dedicated record me me mechanism for their feeding, their gain in weight, and the required information which need to be given to the parents by IEC and audiovisuals. Uh, this have been developed, and they are the key to good care and standard indicators. Indicators have been put in place. I believe uh, we have we are one of the few countries, first few countries, who have designated indicators for observing kangaroo mother care in our SNCUs. So, from the records which are available, SNCU online is a, uh, a, a real time, uh, a, you know, a real time information system for us in which we can monitor actually all the SNCUs, which are almost 900 of them are there now. And there we can see steadily the eligible, eligible um, 
program uh, children and newborns are getting uh, kangaroo mother prayer care and as of late last year 42% of eligible babies got kangaroo mother care in this snsu uh, this dedicated uh, um, uh, monitoring india actually indicator actually uh, help us pressing this uh, how the kangaroo mother care is promoted and whether the essentials are doing it or not doing it and then accordingly we monitor and advise and guide the essentials a uh, regular follow up is being done uh, uh, by the uh, professionals by the trained uh, providers at essentials and dics up to 1 year uh this already i have said that community level we have the system in place uh screening for uh babies preterm babies at dic uh, uh we have at uh, we have we have the regular procedure and we have packages uh for their management so globally these are the interventions early childhood development interventions and we all know this that it starts at the adolescent and adult ad, uh, adolescent period before uh, pregnancy occurs continuing into the pregnancy and through labor and birth then neonatal infancy early childhood period up to school age period so most of the interventions which are mentioned here uh are adopted by government of india and they are in place guidelines have been issued states are following it up uh intervention uh, like what was being discussed here the mother child bonding the psychosocial stimulation positive parenting uh, responsibility uh, all these are part of our program itself we have maternal health program also so that the stress the anxiety they are taken care of during the pregnancy and postpartum period for the financial security of mothers and the families we have social protection and conditional cash transfer for the uh, below poverty line uh, um, families Uh, that is in place through our programs and direct benefits are transferred to them again wash program we have encouraged additionally additionally we have uh, the recently launched uh, insurance based program which is pradhan mantri jan aarogya yojana and we have special packages for preterm babies and for sick babies so we are uh, they can take uh, treatment at any approved private institution also and then get reimbursed according to that uh, insurance plan uh, so ecd uh, implementation we have at the facility level community level home level at various uh, through various mechanism and through iec and capacity building of the providers the the funding and the resource human resources are supported by the national health mission and uh, they are you know uh, the states they project their needs and we uh, from the national health mission the supports are being provided as per their needs so here are few of our pictures how it is being done at the facility level uh, when uh, at the dic the first picture is dic you can see the beautiful uh, de beautifully decorated and developmentally supportive pictures uh, which are part of our dics Uh, at uh, you know at facility to admit it even uh, you can see the males are also providing kangaroo mother care and the last one is at nrc nutritional rehabilitation center uh, these pictures are 
of the various community level uh, platforms which we use for uh, promoting ecd that is uh, village health and nutrition days happening in villages uh, you know every month we have parenting workshops mothers group meeting uh, both prenatal and postnatal and home visits under ashas uh, for hbnc and hbyc program so the messages that are given these are our some of our ic materials which are uh, you know uh, they they are uh, about developmental delays how to detect it at what age what is appropriate uh, for how, we have a very very beautiful uh, guidance on thousand days first thousand days and which uh, from the conception day to till second year we have uh, outlined and guided the states what are the expected things and what need be done to support early child development uh, ecd call center we have i have said that they make regular calls especially to these preterm babies babies which received kangaroo mother care as a follow up and the sensu discharges and uh, parenting support is given for through this call and developmental milestones are uh, informed to the patients uh, to the mothers and parents so that they can follow them up uh, at the home uh, we have this uh, app ayushman bhava uh first thousand days so here uh, it empowers the uh, families to you know uh, uh, be aware to be informed and to help them out with uh, development monitoring the development of the uh, babies uh, so to end i would say that uh, you know through uh, all these sdg goals uh which we are uh, addressing through early child development uh, are being uh, addressed by us uh, we have continuous consistent efforts uh, towards babies especially the preterm and the low birth weight babies especially those babies which need skin to skin contact and need that initial support uh, for for the you know lack of uh, you know they because being born early the the this the contact they have lost early so for them we have several programs and uh, we do believe uh, that various innovations various researches which has been presented today uh, they will guide us in future for fine tuning our programs father and we will definitely uh, look into it because uh, the survival uh, if we can control uh, the thrive part we have to address properly through the follow up mechanisms uh, thank you very much i must appreciate the presentations already i have gone through them like i i was listening through them Dr. Niels, Dr. Natalie, Dr. Ruchi, Dr. Rekha Udani, who are working such extensively in this field, uh, and uh, also uh, the KMC Foundation, Dr. Vani, Dr. Somshekar, uh, everyone. I uh, I thank for giving me this uh, platform to project government efforts and also as a learning experience for myself. Thank you very much. thank you very much madam for your excellent presentation this was the main purpose with which we had called this meeting that we have some plans are there but a lot of gaps are there we need to fill up and we have to universalize this facilities and programs because dic for example it is there working in very well in some of the places but not at reach many places like that we will take up these discussions sometimes but i am really happy that you have taken so much interest and that augurs well for us for the future thank you very much thank you ma'am uh, if there are any questions uh, one of the questions that uh, 
uh, was there for uh, uh, madam was as to uh, uh, how how can we go ahead in the future and in what way can uh, the government help getting asha workers even more interested in this in that sort i think that was one of the questions that was asked uh, anyone have any other question madam if you can stop sharing your screen please dr ghosh uh, i can maine kar diya thank you main main so uh, uh if there are any questions uh, there are a lot of questions that have been answered and uh, we can highlight some of the questions uh, that are there so one important question that was asked uh, is how can we motivate uh, fathers to do kangaroo mother care in the nicu and uh, dr parag and dr neels have uh, explained uh, that their fathers are actually very eager and uh, dr natali has actually also said that uh, because the father usually would have a temperature which is slightly one celsius great more than his wife due to the testosterone and if you explain that to the father then that might be uh, even more useful and you can get uh, fathers to uh, cooperate dr nees also said that uh, there can be a dopamine surge in the father's brain uh, and making them committed to the infants if uh, they start giving skin to skin care in the first few hours uh, we are already going past time and we have answered a lot of questions Uh, no, so can I uh, request Dr. Natalie to say something? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, Natalie, you have listened to our government presentation, but yes. if you have any suggestions, or uh, there is even generally also, that, yeah, there is yes. the, one thing that I was asking myself. Uh, I think that. Uh, each time more people are thinking in the premature infant uh, with a gestational age so i really want to insist that the follow up must be done in corrected age yeah it is very important because if you take a baby who was 32 weeks one is 40 weeks 3 kg is beautiful for me but if you look at him with who curves and you say that this baby who was 32 is 2 months old 3 kg will not be the same yeah it will be uh, oh you must give something else to your baby is not well nutrition look at this this kind of thing so it is and perhaps a mother will give artificial meal because they are telling her that it's not sufficient in breastfeeding so it is very important to think with a follow up in corrected age because even in neurological development in psychomotor development i will not ask at 6 months of corrected age the same than a term baby at six, i mean i need to put this baby in covered age during the first year yeah because uh, the baby cannot jump if he, he was two months less or three months less you must give to his brain the time to yes to mature up to 40 weeks then to do he will do a catch up okay he will do the catch up after but let's we must let him do it uh with the stimulation of the environment and this kind of thing but we must evaluate this baby in covered age are you agree with me uh, dr reka and dr nanawati i mean it's very important yeah yeah yes. it's very important yes. so in the follow up uh, which was presented i think it's important to put that one whenever possible the follow up must be done in covered age whenever possible when you have a uh, uh, gestational age when you don't have a gestational age perhaps you can evaluate it but uh, because the mother know when she was waiting this baby for this date or not i mean we have to try to think like this in uh, another important question is many of our field workers they are not in a position many of our community based workers they are not in a position to 
estimate the gestational age and other details. So can we use in that purpose post-menstrual age as a... I think we, we are using everything we have. Hmm. But, you know, we have a small video on the Ballard test that it's not so complicated. It's not so complicated to teach to your worker. I mean, okay. it's right. possible. Yeah, okay. and I can send you the video if you want. Yes, yeah, it's we would like to. Even in English. <laughs> okay, right. And any other questions from the audience? Some second. Dr. News, can you go ahead? Yeah, Dr. News wanted to put it. Follow on from what Natalie said and your question, Shashi. Yes. Asha, for the person at the village. Yeah. Uh, my suggestion would be put that baby skin to skin, even if it's for pure compassion. Yeah. Uh, now, that baby might be smaller than you think. Uh, even for me as a doctor, it's hard to tease out SGA and preterm and low birth weight and those kind of things. Uh, but for that baby, it deserves zero separation, okay. even if it's palliative care. Now we'll find that such a baby didn't palliate. <laughs> it responded positively. Uh, and then what I've kind of suggested is that to the usher and the mother, if the baby opens his or her eyes, it's a signal that you should fight for that baby. If the baby closes his eyes, her eyes peacefully, then let it depart in peace. Now somewhere in between there, there there's the sense of living far, far away. But in the meantime, we've provided compassionate care. We've provided the child's best interests, never to be separated. So I would make this appeal. Yeah, so at least in our guidelines, which we have prepared for the care of the babies in remote areas, I have some, told them, all the babies, you can put them on skin-to-skin -skin contact. You don't have to say whether it is low birth weight, full term, or this. The mature babies will live soon on their own. So babies will decide whether they want to continue with KMC or not. So the question sometimes which people ask there, why one baby is given this care and why I am not given that care, that is also nullified there. So that is what we are advising, at least in the remote areas where no other help is available, only the community health worker has to do. So we don't make a distinction. We say as soon as the baby is born, put them on skin-to-skin -skin contact. Let the baby decide whether it wants to continue there or leave it. So, am I okay? Madam, Madam yeah. there's a question. There's a question that Dr. Ashutosh Mahabhatra has asked. Uh, yeah. I think Dr. Niels and uh, Dr. Charpa can answer. Uh, yes. Whether there is any hormonal impact uh, in Kangaroo mother care for babies. Yes, uh, earlier talked about oxytocin, but can you please explain, Dr. Niels? hormonal impact of KMC? So there's a number of such studies uh, and we call them uh, signaling hormones. There are particular hormones that are working at birth and all of them work together. Uh, oxytocin is the first, dopamine, vasopressin, uh, some endorphins, and they also work with cortisol and norepinephrine, epinephrine, adrenaline and noradrenaline. And it's the package of those uh, that are regulated and set at a certain point. So uh, I understood your question. Uh, have I answered it? Yes, there are many such studies. Uh, you can show that those things are taking place, but it's quite difficult to then uh, make the statement that this affects the outcome. You're showing it as physiology. You're showing it as the normal kind of expectation. Then I'm saying separation disrupts that. Uh, but now separation has become normal. So we're answering the question in a different way. Uh, am I digressing? Uh, no, no, I, I, yeah, Dr. Natalie, please go ahead, please go ahead. No, um, yes, uh, uh, on the infant, I first want to say to Dr. Sashi uh, that there, there is something, put the baby immediately in skin to skin contact. And for people, if the baby reacts and the baby is, uh, you think the baby could survive, perhaps you can think about transportation. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. It's a perfect transportation. 
in kangaroo care and uh, with uh, something of colostrum. So think about that too, yeah, for the, uh, a, a good surviving, no? Um, that's important. The second thing I want to say, uh, on the hormone in the infant, we didn't find uh, in our study uh, uh, a lot, but I want to tell you that actually we are writing a paper because we are slow. I know we are slow because of a lot of work, but what we found at 18 years is that the gray matter, Miss, look at that, the gray matter and all the nucleus of the base, which is gray matter too, are dependent of the duration of the kangaroo during the neonatal period. Can you imagine? I mean, it's beautiful. Yes, because you can try to associate that to some tests. So we look at the uh, um, fi uh, fine uh, motricity, memory, IQ. So it's a small effect, but 18 years after, 18, 20 years after. So that's very interesting. So for this reason, I was insisting that the brain is immature. So this immature brain, the fact that you put it in a less stressful environment have an impact. So that's very important, no? I mean, uh, yeah. it's nice. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I would now suggest yeah, uh, can we go, go ahead to the next uh, part sir, because I think we, we have already overshot it, sir. We may have all, already overshot it, sir. 30 may minutes. May I make a point? Yeah, madam. Yes, uh, yeah. I just, uh, you know, want to say that the KMC is actually our normal biology and the brain development is normal in a normal place that is skin to skin contact with mother. So rather than proving how KMC is beneficial, we should be studying and describing the harm to the normal brain caused by the toxic stress that follows the infant and mother separation. So rather than this thing, you know, so we should be doing that. So that is our whole thinking requires to be changed that what is normal is normal. What is bad for the baby is bad. And we should stress on that. That is one. And just additional point that, you know, in country uh, like us, many people don't get paternity leave or uh, this. So we can involve the fathers in giving KMC at night. So that's what we do in our unit. So the fathers, they are in the unit at night. They give KMC so that mother also gets some time to rest. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mohit, uh, can you please summarize and then ask Dr. Snehal to close the session? Because I think we are late already. Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, it was a very nice session, like especially the for the neonatologists like me, like we have like neonatologists like me, we have our head all stuck in cardiac and in ventilation. So we are just stuck there. We don't think about all other these things. So, and these are the basic, very important things. And I still remember uh, uh, Shachivani madam meeting me like three, four years back. And she, and then I got insisted. And now because there was issue of KMC in our NICU because of the privacy, so we have started shifting babies with warmers and everything to the mother side at 700 grams, 800 grams. And we have been doing, and the babies, we are able to uh, decrease our sepsis rate and babies weight gain and everything. So this has changed the outcome in my NICU. So I got, my head got out of this and the whole session, uh, Dr. Nils, Dr. Natli, Udani Madam, and uh, uh, Nanavati Madam, so all those things, uh, uh, they were, uh, you know, giving the same message and the research and everything was giving the same message. And this was very helpful. I would again like to thank all of them for being here, especially Dr. Um, uh, Nathalie, like I think so it's early morning over there and she is being so actively involved with us on the, and especially so, there are so many people like uh, Dr. Alok Bhandari is there, Dr. Lalan is there from the central NNF. And we got a very encouraging remarks, even on the groups by very big people like uh, our president NNF, Dr. Uh, sorry, President IAP, Dr. Degan Shastri, and we have our, uh, more, many major, main people are being logged in. So I like, thank everyone. And uh, the message is clear and um, out Dr. for everyone. Hanji, sir. Dr. Mui. 
the next NNF president, Dr. Sandeep, also is there. Yeah, Maybe he's we can also speak there. a few things, and we hope he is get his. Get, we can get his commitment for next year for KMC yeah. also. Thank you very much, sir. to invite me and until next year for kangaru care mother care and the dr nagli sahib also and sir you also most welcome anytime and give the suggestion for that and we are we are going to continue the nnf and uh, kfc kangaru mother care in next year also and thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are going to in periphery with a small place what uh, for a few few groups is there uh, each and uh, every town for gynec and pediatric uh, staff is uh, available for that, and we are going to continue to uh, train that people also. No, I, Dr. Niels, you have put in a very good thought in our mind. From thousand days, you have shifted us to thousand minutes, and now even thousand seconds. So I think that concept also everybody will carry. Dr. Natalie has put up the fine tuning of the follow up programs and uh, bombay group has shown us that it is possible to do it in in, in india so we should have more centers like that and of course dr sumita ghosh has told us already what are all the things there in government planning and programs but that requires a lot of fine tuning not only fine tuning even cross tuning also is required universalization is required and lot of things are there so on behalf of KMC Foundation, I thank each and every one of you for giving us some good messages and all the participants who have given us good feedback and interactions and all our organizers, Dr. Mohit Sani and his team, Dr. Somshekhar and all your groups and all the other participants who have assured us that they will continue improving KMC in our country, our state, and uh, many places. Thank Madam you very doctor. much. Yes. Yeah, please let him go. Yeah. Dr. Snail, can you? I'll give the official word of thanks. Yes, yes, go ahead, please. And then we'll stop. Yes. Uh, everybody has said a lot of things. I don't have much to say, but it was a fantastic event. It was participated. At least I saw 161 participants at one point of time. It could have been more or less. I do not know. But thank you so much to Shashivani, Madam, KMC Foundation and Dr. Somshekar at the outset, who were the pole, who were the center around which everything was hinged around. Uh, Dr. Mohit Sahani, who was, the, who was the president of NNF Gujarat. More importantly, we get to hear today from the people who have started KMC. It is so nice that Dr. Niels and Dr. Natalie, who are the pioneers, and we had a direct interaction with them. Dr. Ruchi and Dr. Rekha, what do I say? I have been hearing, I was from Bombay, so I've been hearing them since ages uh, as, a, as an undergraduate student, and it was always so nice to hear the always great speakers, Dr. Ruchi and Rekha. Dr. Sumita Ghosh was important because uh, government participation is the most important over here. Uh, at the last outset, let me have only one word of, of everything. Till the time I kept on training, training my staff to do KMC, they would not do it. But KMC program arranged by Dr. Somshekhar only. And once after they came back, KMC really...